Hello there. Once again, this is Anton from Anton Old Bay. Thank you for stopping by the collection room today. I'm looking at some comics. Uh, these are a few more issues that I picked up from the Comics Collectible Show. A few... It's been more than a few weeks back. Um, I got Predator number one, uh, Vampirella Mind War number two, um, an issue of Miss Meow, uh, The Immortal Red Sonia, and a Godzilla. And uh, these were each a dollar. They were a dollar each out of a bin and just kind of a random grab. These are way newer comics than I normally get, but they looked interesting. So I thought, what the heck, I'll give it a shot. And besides, I love Gigan. Gigan is one of the nastiest, worst of all of Godzilla's enemies. I love Godzilla. I love the films, all that stuff. Uh, if it has Gigan, um, I think one of my all time favorites is Megalon, but he was only in one episode or one movie. And Gigan is reappearing in many. He was also in Godzilla vs. Megalon, so he has always been a longtime uh, favorite of mine. So I just thought I would see uh, what the comic looks like. Um, it's a new comic. That always makes me a little skeptical. You got very glossy pages, but you got a. This is a huge, huge two page spread battle uh, going on. That's interesting. I've never really read much for Godzilla comics, so I don't know how well it translates. Like, I don't know. Part of what I like about Godzilla is the the fact of how it's made. The suits, the miniatures, the stuff like that. That's And the size scale. And sometimes in comics it's very hard to, I don't know, display that size scale. Like, like are you being conveyed that this guy is that big? It's kind of hard to feel that on these pages like that. So, I mean, because you don't normally draw something from, like, down down low. So, it makes the characters feel smaller. It's one of the things that makes me think I'm not, not a wild uh, Godzilla comic fan. This is a mite thick, heavy book, though. Very, very thick. Pages are thick, extremely glossy. And many pages. I'm surprised how many pages this is. Does it even say? Uh, it does not. This is cover A, though. If I can get them to separate. Well... It looks nice, but I must say, I'm not really blown away by it. I was kind of hoping to be blown away, but it is what it is. Um, and also, it is an IDW. I am not a fan of IDW comics most of the time. Uh, just not. The art's always really great. I don't like how they're written. They all seem to be um, fan fictions, I guess. Tumblr fan fictions at that. Um, so next up we have Immortal Red Sonia. I used to have a bunch of old Red Sonia stuff. So this is a Dynamite book. Dynamite always has beautiful covers, beautiful, pretty much always beautiful art inside. Um, and they're usually pretty enjoyable. Just being Red Sonia, we'll see kind of what's going on here. Already we've got a building, castle, walking. So we have met our weird quota already, and that's great. A uh, redhead, that's of course our heroine. Fighting a wizard, she hasn't killed him yet, that's surprising. Now the art is not as cool as the cover. I didn't expect it to be, but I didn't expect it to be quite this cartoony. I feel like when you're dealing with with Red Sonia, it shouldn't look cartoony and it shouldn't really look like uh, Adventure Time. And that's kind of the vibes I'm getting off of it. Is this feels like Adventure Time. Not that I don't like Adventure Time, but that it just feels very weird to see it uh, from a Red Sonia. Mordred. 
Well, I can't say as I am super wowed. Um, I'm not like mega little disappointed. It was only a dollar. Um, I would not have wanted to pay four dollars for it though. What are you gonna do? Um, and at a five dollar cover price, Miss Meow is wanting five dollars for a cover price. I have no idea what Miss Meow is. Um, I don't. But I see ninjas. I've also never had any experience with Merck Publishing. Don't know what that is. This company does seem to love pink colors. Black and pink. Can't fault them for that. But we'll see what it looks like in here. Looks like some Greek armor, perhaps Roman. Art style is good. I'm not like being super wowed yet by like weirdness or anything like that. Hairstyles are good. I love their color choices. I don't know, Miss Meow looks kind of like, like a Fortnite character. And then this guy looks, you know what? Actually, he looks like another Fortnite character I can think of too. Okay, so they look like Fortnite characters. Fortnite characters with blood combat. Doesn't look terrible, but it's still not really, really grabbing me. I mean, it leaves us on a cool, that's a, that's a beautiful, picture right there and I mean it comes with a lot of covers which is pretty typical for um, well, a lot of these newer glossy comics I can't really say much for Merc but I know like Dynamite you get tons of covers for every single issue and I understand what they're trying to do they're trying to help recoup the cost it's just like repaints on action figures it's the same mold but we can throw a different cover on it and we can sell it again and get some more of our money back uh, I finally read it. It's Linzer. Uh, Linzer covers. I love Linzer covers. He, I originally did covers for Dawn, and now I see he does covers for a lot of stuff, or he or she, Linzer, whoever that is, uh, does covers for a lot of things, and just something about the way he draws musculature. I just appreciate it. Everybody has, like, a, you know, a waist and muscle and flesh and everything, and it's, it just looks right. Looks good. Uh, this does not look good. She looks terrible. And also I feel like this art style, once again, is coming off a little cartoony for, I mean, for the title. Maybe that's just me. Also there, Vampirella looks like Leonard Nimoy for some reason. And that's, that's terrible. Leonard Nimoy is Vampirella. That said, hopefully he can do better. Maybe it's not the cartooniness, but there is some quality to this that's just not popping with me that I'm not really liking. There is a ghost creature pouring out of that guy's neck. That is amazing. He's hatching all over the place. Mm, the art's growing on me. Something about it is weird though. Like I can't place it. And it's something I've only seen in newer comics. So I don't know what to make of it. And there you go. There's a kajillion different covers for that. Um, and I did a video on Siren's Gate, some weird, uh, comics I picked up recently. Um, very odd how they're done. And wow, even more covers because, you know, you got to have, you know, 20 different covers for every single issue you put out, right? I don't think so. Anyway, our last book up is Predator. Uh, this is a Marvel. Doesn't that make it like a super normal? I wouldn't expect a ton of dialogue in Predator comics, but uh, it's a person. typical family out colonizing a strange alien world 
your parents get killed by hunters because that happens and then you gotta track that one down apparently and make it pay and it's through flashbacks i'm gonna be honest i flipped through this one already earlier and just kind of see what it was um yeah this thing hunts kills a bunch of her friends and family and she grows up and is hunting it down she keeps killing different predators to try and find the one that killed her family and can't and there is a marvel sticker digital content all in all though doesn't look bad i usually enjoy these but most of my red honestly have been through dark horse so that's nice and creepy I would say I do like the Alien franchise better than the Predator franchise. Um, none of these really blew me away. Um, they look beautiful on the outside and they're absolutely worth the dollar I paid in their covers. But I don't know, just the interiors and stuff like that didn't didn't grab me the same way and didn't quite look as good. Uh, but that maybe that's just me. I'm not the guy to ask when it comes to new comics because they're not my faves at all. Anyway. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you guys later. Peace. Bye.